And uh, Miss, I, I didn't really got your name. Um, what is your name? Lana. Miss, Miss how? Lana. L-A-N-A. Lana. Miss Lana, um, it's, yeah. a, it's a privilege to have you here on the show. And blessed morning to you guys. So um, first off, uh, let's just give our audience them a little bit about yourself. We could start with Miss Lena, and then let's have you, uh, Miss Shari, um, giving our audience a little bit about yourself for the people I want to know, you know? Shari, can you give our viewers a little yes. bit about yourself? Yes, yes. so, okay, Shari Medina, um, I am living in the Twin Towns for over 23 years now. <laughs> I love my community very much. I'm a community activist. I continue to be a business professional at my, my field. And, of course, um, you know, we're always there trying to reach out to help our community, to build community, like my dear friend Lana said, to build community friends in our community. Um, it's always important to note that God blesses each of us in different ways and gives us different talents so we can execute at different uh, levels, you know, so we can also bless other people. And that's one thing about me, I, I guess I would like everybody to know that everything I do comes from my heart. It comes with a feeling of just being able to reach out and be genuine about what I do. So basically, in a nutshell, that's who Shari is. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love people um, people that express themselves in this sort of manner. I myself um, totally agree with you. You know, I, I believe that whatever I do, whether it might be um, to play a little bit of football, or whatever it might be to come on the show, whatever I do, I do it from the heart. And I do understand that, that, you know, as a community, we all have all the tools that we need to, to further in the future and to make Belize better. We just have to um, know how to use it, you know. Every tool is for a certain purpose, and we all as human beings are just tools in the most high hand. So um, that's awesome, Miss, Miss, Miss Shari. Um, so uh, just let us um, know, uh, when did you guys started this mission into, into Belize? We started about six years ago. Yeah. And um, we, we came out, we actually did mission trips out there two years in a row, three years in a row. And then the pandemic hit. And this is why it's such a blessing from God that we had met Sherry because we couldn't physically come over because of the pandemic, but Sherry was able to carry out with funds that we sent her the work that we wanted to do. We wanted to be able to feed the community, community not only with food, but also with prayer. Right. Um, and um, so it was, it was an amazing experience to go through all the way from the start because we were able to send her funds, and Sherry was able to implement those funds and reach out to the community and let them know that, you know, we still do care. We, we did not just come and then leave. It's just we couldn't come back with the pandemic. Um, hopefully in 2023, we'll actually be able to come out again. 
Um, but it has been the greatest pleasure ever working with the Belizean people. I mean, they are just, like you said, we see your hearts, and your hearts are amazing. And Thank you. Um, Thank you very it's much. more of a blessing to us than actually for you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. You're a delight. I, I, I really, um, I don't know it's the first time I, I, I'm seeing you, but you're, you're just, you're, uh, you're delighting me. You're, 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 I can see, I can see where you're putting the hands with the heart together on, on, on this project. And I'm um, Belize, thank you in a whole, ma'am. And it's great to have you here on, on our show and so that the Belizeans them could recognize from whence this come. Um, so are you working with an with an organization there in the US? Is is that is that a part of the job you do or tell us a little bit more about that? I actually um, I do a lot of volunteer work at our church. We have a, a big church in um, Colorado. It's in Aurora. It's called Colorado Community Church. And through this church I was doing mission work in Peru and then we ended up coming over to Belize because somebody heard about us and asked us to come over there. And so I'm working through my church. Um, and I just, it was through a pastor, Pastor Jim and Pastor D, um, who no longer are going to probably be able to come with us, but I'm just carrying it out for them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all through a church organization uh, in Colorado. Beautiful, beautiful. So, um, Ms. Shara, what, what are your um, ultimate aim in, in your mission, you know? I mean, you know, okay. everybody starts at one point, but, you know, mm -hmm. as, as human beings, we always tend to have a, a future view. So, um, give us more or less what is your main aim in working with the community and what you plan to, um, to, to instill or do in the future. Okay. So basically, let me just mention that this initiative with the Colorado Community Group has really um, made me keep on my feet. And I love the fact that I can actually execute these kinds of projects for the community because for me, I'm very community driven. And I feel that the more we can work together as a community, the more stronger we become, the more blessed we become, and the more fruitful we become to be role models for our future generation as well. This, this project, if I can make mention now, um, feeding 250 families within the Twin Towns within the next week um, is going to be an instrumental aspect in helping those in need. We all know that food has tremendously gone on a high rise, and so being able to, to give back to these people who are probably unemployed, single mothers, those who are um, in need, really in need at this time, these things will come as a, as a blessing to them because they themselves will be able to see that we're trying. It's not a lot, but a little bit that every little bit that comes. Now, when it comes to myself, first thing ever, when it is to the community, uh, being in the community, I will continue to be my capacity as a continue to be a community actor, to work for my people, even though I am not elected, because this is another political drive that we're working on. And I will continue to do my best to be one of those citizens who care about my community. I put my best foot forward and teach others as well to follow and to make a difference. Because at the end of the day, we all want leaders in our community. We want people who are ready to come together and be the example for others to follow so we can make this big blue difference in our country. So my, my aim is to, to work toward a different initiative that will build, develop, and uplift our community. Right, right. Well said, Mishari. I always say, you know, um, I always say is that um, it's, it's not a government that changes the country or or move the country or drive the country forward, but it's his, the people of the country. You know, um, the government cannot make no change if, if the people are not there to make the difference. And um, that is well said. And um, yes, of course, you know, we need people in the community to step up and to start, um, start, 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 push this country forward, you know. 
Um, Miss Miss Lena, um, Miss Shari, um, give give me your your thoughts on on poverty, especially on poverty here in Belize, according to your knowledge. You want to go first, Lana? Okay. So basically, since I believe Lana is 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 my friend in Colorado, and she always would reach out to me about the different projects or so that we can do. Maybe this question would more be like for us who mostly live here in Belize. Yeah. So yeah, I believe that at this time we, we are all going through um, some really crucial times. It's a worldwide thing that's happening. Um, poverty existed at all levels. Um, if we classify poverty, it's a broad topic. And so I believe that at the moment it's something that we could look at to say that we're classifying poverty in our community as being something that a lot of people um, see probably not being able to have a, a job because they need money to be able to pay their bills and buy their food. And another aspect would be, um, because unemployment is real, um, you know, the price is so high that a lot of people have to be scrambling all over the place to see where they can get something to eat. So I would classify that as poverty. And also, um, when, when we also, also don't, don't take the initiative to try to do it for our own, that is also classified as poverty. So I believe that it is not, it is not as bad as we used to see it. It's just a matter of implementing little programs and implementing community um, efforts to be able to help those in need. So we can eliminate that word poverty and work together for better causes because we will, we may not be able to eliminate it totally but we can you know enhance whatever is there fix whatever is there mend whatever is there for the for the cause and try to level things up so we can move forward comfortably because we cannot eliminate it totally i will not say at this time where we are i can't say we can eliminate poverty totally at this time but we can help in the process to help those in need so poverty can level off a bit. So that's how I would, would approach that question. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Lena and, and Miss Shari, again, um, thank you guys for, for, for the job you are doing. And I want you guys to know one thing, right? Um, here in Belize, we're not, we're not an overpopulated country. Um, we, we don't have a great population. And um, since you guys, I, I heard you mention that you're, you're helping 250 families. And if you guys come out and help 250 families within San Ignacio and Santa Elena, as long as you guys would browse and, and, and find out who are the really, uh, the families that are really in need, I know this is gonna make a great difference with our population and with you guys helping out 250 families trust me that is almost like um for my my other question i i want to ask um how what is your current project and um how often will this be happening because like i am stating that if you guys are helping out 250 families that's almost almost like if if, if you're touching the entire town you know especially if you guys would browse and find the ones that are really in need of assistance 250 it's a lot and it's almost like um if if you would have 250 families that are poor and we could elevate them it's like it's like the entire kyle is elevated you know so um how often will are you guys planning to to have these sort of um projects in our area Lana, would you, would you like, like to say, to say? Um, it's an annual, annual thing that we do, so? Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that we started when the pandemic happened um, because we couldn't physically come over there, so we sent the funds for Sherry to implement this, and we couldn't have done it without Sherry, honestly. Um, she was the one that were the hands and feet of our hearts, you know? Um, so we were incredibly blessed to have met her. Um, and, and so, so then, then we, we did, did it the second, second year because, because we couldn't, couldn't come out again. again. Um, and, and hopefully, hopefully next, next year, year we, if, if we, we, you know, God willing, this is all in God's God hands. hands. I mean, we, we have, have no control, control over what he wants us to do. We just kind of follow what he calls us to do. 
Um, but we will be coming out again, hopefully in 2023. And then we will hopefully be able to help Sherry put this together and once again, reach out to the community. Um, and we'll just continue to do this as long as God is leading us to do it. And, and we'll just go from there. <laughs> and to add to Lana's um, comments, and I, I'm so grateful that they asked me to be a part of their team here in Belize. Um, Lana, you know that these families will be benefiting, and I want the community to know that the selection process for the people who are getting these items are not just handpicked by myself. Yeah. It's through the churches, it's through the schools. Yeah. And it, like I mentioned, and I want to get this very clear, it's non-political. Yeah. So even if you're from whatever political party and your name is on that list to be given that bag of grocery, you will be getting that bag of grocery. Because we are looking at those who are in need, not those who have a specific political affiliation. I just want to clarify that. And yeah. those names, like I said, are coming from, most of them are coming from the schools and the churches. Which better place to ask for these names? These people know those who are dire in need, along with myself, who know a, a couple people who are, are others who might need as well. But I prefer to be fair and to do it through the right channels. And so um, this food drive is something that's taking place, like Ms. Lana said, for a couple years now. But let me also mention that the Colorado group has also assisted in back-to-school drives. They yeah. have assisted with providing stationary material for kids, for 150 kids at schools. They have also provided several schools within the Twin Towns with, with sinks and faucets to, to put in extra um, hand sanitizing channels for kids at schools. So apart from the food, the Colorado group have also assisted with, with school supplies and other uh, supplies for schools. So it's a real community effort that this Colorado group is providing to make San Ignacio and Santa Elena feel the love, feel the blessing, and be able to help our people to build together. So I just wanted to clarify that. Exactly, exactly. Um, that is awesome, that is awesome. And yes, exactly, that's a good way of browsing things. You know, you deal with the churches then because the churches always have the complaint from, from families, you know. They always know who are the family that are really in need of, of this assistance, you know. Um, do you think, Mishari, and this question here uh, specifically is for you, you know. Um, do you think that part of our, our problem in Belize um, uh, concerning poverty has, has something to do with the way we as Belizeans was educated and brought up by our, our ancestors? Uh, that is a good question, but uh, my approach to this question would be, um, there are several ways how we as human beings and as citizens of our country can assist to make progress in our lives. I always believe that even if you are cultured in a certain way growing up, you uh, bring values as well as a person. And if you believe that you can prioritize your life in terms of moving forward and want to see betterment, there is, when there is a will, there is a way. So, like, for example, my parents were not born into rich families. I wasn't born into a rich family. But educating myself, my parents ma making sure we're educated, making sure that we have the basics to survive in terms of our food to eat on our tables, teaching us vocational skills, teaching us to be hands-on and to be able to multitask and to be able to be open-minded about things. I believe that bringing all that approach together can take us and move us away from the poverty mindset. It can help us to be more um, helpful to be more an asset to community rather than a liability. And so um, I believe that once we push ourselves as individuals to make things happen and to reach out and to not wait for someone to give to us also, that is another factor. Because there are those who really cannot afford to go and find, to get a, to get a job or to really 
they, they, some of them don't have food on their tables. So this is where it also comes in, where we help each other, because we need to help each other too. And this is what the community needs to see, that when there is someone really in need, or when there are those who are in need, it's not because they really want to be begging or want to be clinging on you, it's because they really don't have another way. And if we have the solution and we have the, the roads to be able to channel them into making them a little bit more comfortable in terms of giving them a bag of groceries or helping them to get a job, this is what God wants us to do. He puts us out there to serve. And this is if we can continue to have a positive mindset in building each other, teach each other how to make things work, how life would be easier if we do certain things together, hold hands together and work together, then we can all eliminate that mindset of saying, okay, my parents didn't teach me to do this, so I can't do this. No, the individual being needs to be able to have that mindset that they can make that change. And I think that it starts within. It starts with you. So that's how Righteous. I see the whole thing. <laughs> Righteous, Miss Miss Shari. Um, the reason why I asked this question because um something you said early on um it reached me, you know, and the, the same thing I was trying to explain about um you know as human beings we're just tools in the most high hand and we're here on earth to accomplish certain things. We were sent by the most high here to make earth a better place, you know. And sometimes, you know. We, we, we tend to um, not have our eyes on truly what we're supposed to be, you know, like, like I'm going to explain about a tool, you know, in, in, in the hand of the worker, you know, uh, if, 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 if I have a pliers here, a pliers is going to do the job of a pliers, it's not going to do the job of a shovel, but we as human beings need to know ourselves first, you know, and then, um, realize what, what we are capable, capable of doing, the talents that was given to us by the Most High, and, and find a way that we could impact positively on our community, you know? Right, right. You know, Ida Manwe, I always um, believe in a God, you know, Miss, Miss, Miss Lena, um, God bless you, you know, um, but I always believe in a God, you know, and I believe that um, God is working through, through you guys, through Miss Lena, um, Miss, Miss Shari, and I do believe that you guys are, are, are using your, your, your talent in a right way, you know, in the right way. You know, for example, myself, you know, I, I want to be real. Um, my father did not teach me to look out for the community. He taught me to work for myself and maintain my children them, you know, that's what I was taught growing up, you know. Um, but being that I've already grown into a, 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 a big man and thing, um, I took it on my own to, to help people, you know, and that's, that's, that's what I do, you know. Ms. Shari, um, any, if you have any um, projects that you need any help for, please feel free to contact me and I, I will assist you in whatever I could do, you know, and the progress uh, will assist you in whatever we could do to help this movement. You know, we want to be a, a part of it, you know, it's a, it's a great movement and trust me, we want to be a part of this movement. All right, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well guys, um, before, just before we wrap up, you guys have any um, final, final words that you would like to say? Um, knowing that um, you said, you said Mishari, that um, it's your, your project is running from the 4th, which is today, right? Yesterday. So we could, um, our viewers, viewers could look out for you guys to come through the community, right? Right, right. Uh, between now and Sunday, I know Mother's Day is being celebrated on Sunday, so these grocery bags will be coming in good for some of these mothers to cook up their rice and beans and have their little meals yes. with families. So this would be a great gift in advance yes. for these moms. <laughs> yes, yes. A very, very good um initiation initiative to, to to do carry out on mother's day you know a lot of mothers single mothers will be blessed by this you know miss lena any final words as we wrap up our show well first of all i just want to say thank you it's been a pleasure to meet you and to work alongside um all of you and to piggyback on your response earlier um god created every single person on this earth for a purpose every single one of them and like you said some people need screwdrivers some people need pliers 
everybody has a part in this world. And there's a, uh, there's a verse in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, that says, anybody who be in Christ is a new creation. Right. All things passed away and all things become new. So it doesn't really matter what you've come from. It's seeing the hope of what you can be and knowing that Christ is with you and that he created you to do something. He created you for a single purpose. And nobody else can take that part of your creation, you know? You have to do what you were created to do. Right. And sometimes it's hard to figure it out. It really is, I'm not gonna lie. But moving towards it and going towards it is the main purpose. It's like. You know, seeking God more and having him lead you and guide you into what you want to be doing or need to be doing um, can eliminate that, that, that fear of poverty and the falling into poverty. You know? And, and we, we have it here, too. It's not just out there. We have it back here, too. So, but thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, my heart is just filled with joy that, you know, you would have us on, you know, your station, and I'm so blessed to have known Terry. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well, it's I, been I, I, a... Thompson, before, just to wrap up, I want to say that this project is going to be, um, like I said, for 250 families within the Twin Towns. Um, it's, it's collaboration with the Colorado Community Church for those listeners who are just tuning in. And um, it's for single mothers, the elderly, those really uh, dire in need at this time. And um, we'll be knocking some doors because we'll be bringing, on, bringing in these grocery bags. I want to make mention that the community is going to really benefit from what the Colorado Group is providing. And we're very grateful, Lana. We're very grateful for you and the Colorado Group. We love you guys. <laughs> and we want to thank Maximum Radio for allowing us to, to be able to, and yourself, Mr. Thompson, for allowing us to be able to share what we're doing. Um, these are positive things that we want to continue to showcase in our communities, you know. Um, we, I want to sympathize with the family of the late um, Mr. Rodriguez who passed away with a little incident a few days ago, I would say, um, um, my condolences to the family. So um, with these kinds of thoughts, you know, it's sad to know that our community has to be going through these types of things. But we want to be able to build positivity as well mm -hmm. and to level up the playing field because we are so doing so many positive things as well and we want to be able to share that with our community members and to share the love, to share the blessings and to be able to work together for the same cause. Because we're one community, we're not separated. We're one community. We're one world, yes. and, you know, we should be able to be moving towards the positive strides to make things happen in our community as community members. And my dad always tells me charity begins at home. And he always says it's in giving that we receive. So I always believe in those things. And for me, community is parallel to everything. So I really love my community, and I'm looking forward to continue working with the Colorado Group to make things happen. Very good. Um, I want to say um, thank you guys also for being on, on the Progress Kaya show, um, uh, bringing to the, our viewers via our Maximum Radio Station. It's an honor to have you guys here also. Um, this show is the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, this show is going to um, have topics, some real topics, real life situation that is happening within our community and stuff like that. Uh, so sometimes we're going to touch the good, the bad, and the ugly, like I said. But it was a great honor, especially on our first edition of Maximum um, TV, here with Max. And we have something like this, something positive to talk about, something positive to push through. It's, it's, it's a real honor for me to have you guys. And I, um, I salute you guys 100%. Um, Miss Shari, um, speaking about the, the elders, right? Like I said, and I always, once you go up on my show, I always put you up on place, right? I always um, put you on the scene, right? <laughs> you know, um, concerning the senior citizens, um, I would really like, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this offer 
uh, via yeah, over the air right, right away. You know, um, I would really like um, to see, for example, we have uh, some youths that are ready to work also. I would really like to see uh, these youths would be provided some, probably some equipment, for example, like uh, lawnmower, weed eater, stuff like that. And you know, we could go out, go meet these elderly people, and especially, especially for the elderly and the single mothers then. You know, it's rough, like what you said, things, things, price to go for everything. And um, it's, it's really hard to put uh, food on your table, much less when the, when the month come and it's time to chop your yard. You know, you have to, you have $50, you have to spend $50 to um, chop your, your yard. And um, it's really um, hard for these people, especially single mothers and um, the senior citizen. Um, don't you think that it would be a, a, a great idea to probably have these, give these guys some equipment and um, maintain these equipment and have these youths going out there into these people, houses and blessing them with, with, with this, this kind of work also? Of course, of course. And these are the kinds of ideas that we are open to. We are very open to ideas that we believe can work for the community. So ideas like yours, which is very key. We could definitely utilize your, your ideas and put it together and make it come to fruition. Yeah. You know? So it's something I'm glad that Lana is listening to some of the ideas that are coming through. She's right. always asking me about ideas. So thank you, Mr. Thompson, for that. And we'll make a note of it. And it's something to look at and to work at. Right, right. right. Um, thank, thank you guys again. And like I say, you know, um, I always am um, out for my, my honest, honest job that I'm doing here on earth is I'm, I'm, I'm not providing for my family. I, 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 I the top of that, that mentality that, that only that survival mentality, mentality you know. know? Um, it's, it's been that, this survival mentality that caused a lot of crime and stuff like that, you know. I, I, I fly past that mentality, you know. I want to do something for, for the people, you know. I, I don't want my life to just waste away, you know. So, um, Mishari. Miss um, Lena, I have Miss Shari on Facebook. Miss Lena, you could um, look me up on Facebook, Raspa Thompson, and um, send me a little request. And um, I'm here to work with you guys. I really want to work with you guys. And I'm hoping that the next time I have you on our show, we're doing a collaboration uh, with, a, with a project that is going to um, um, impact Santa Elena and Cayo in the future. Yes, sure thing. We're looking forward to working with you too. Yes, and Mishari, anything you need, if the us want simply run or something, you could always just give me one holler, right? I will be there. Our car, Lori. Yes, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for, for, um, for coming on the show. I want to say um, enough love and respect going out to you guys. And I hope for me to know in the future on our mission uh, not say just Belize, but our mission to make Earth a better place. Right. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Bless. God bless, guys. Many blessings. And Max, Max, you don't know my, my cue? You don't, don't know my cue, Max? Miss, Miss Lena, have a blessed day. Miss Shari, bless up. We are link up. One love and respect to all you guys. Me love you, no? Ah, me out.